What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Real Heroes Show. Got Corey and Nick with you here in this video, and we are talking about Apple TV's new series, The Shrink Next Door. They dropped the first three episodes on us this weekend. Uh, there will be spoilers. We're going to talk about all three of those and uh, what we think of the show and the direction it's going and uh, where we hope it goes during the remaining five episodes of the eight-episode miniseries. Uh, if you haven't checked out the show yet, uh, please press pause on this video go over to apple tv plus and check it out it's only yep. five dollars a month it's one of the best values you can get for a streaming service then come back and see us because we are going to talk about all of the spoilers yes. uh nick are, are you feeling cringy after checking these first three out or what a little bit <laughs> even more because it's based on a true story so it, it's yes. not like oh this is a great fictionary tale no no, no this is true yeah to so a very certain extent and that's just man <sighs> Yeah, Unreal. so this one, Unreal. It was, not only is it based off a true story, um, it's a true story that was turned essentially into a podcast, like a like a true life podcast type thing um, that I think came out back in 2019 and mm. it kind of caught fire and people were really into it. Um, so, of course, anytime that happens, the the talk of adapting it into a, a movie sure, or a mini series yeah. is usually what happens when this sort of thing goes on. Um, got picked up by Apple TV uh, and they got some serious star power to come in. Um, you know, we've got uh, Marty played by Will Ferrell, Dr. Ike, who is played by Paul Rudd and Phyllis, who is played by Catherine Hahn. So you've yep. got some uh, like bona fide A-list people in this, which is a, mm -hmm. a little bit different from the the usual uh, Apple TV shows that we review, at least, you know, yeah. like Foundation and Invasion. You've got some actors who are well known, but they also don't spend a lot of time on screen, right. uh, like Sam Neill in Invasion. Spoilers, <laughs> if you haven't watched that, uh, yeah. he's not in the show very much. Jared Harris is not in Foundation a terrible ton. But uh, in these first three episodes, we get, you know, it's pretty much Will Ferrell and Paul Rudd on screen every scene yeah. of the first three hours of, of the series, which yeah. uh, is, is really fascinating. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to break down each of the first three episodes in about five minutes or less, uh, and then we'll we'll give a score and, and our thoughts uh, after that towards the end. So uh, episode one was entitled The Consultation. Uh, this episode was essentially our introduction to the series. We got to meet uh, Ike, Marty, and Phyllis, who seem to be our three main characters of the show. Um, we get the first therapy session um, between Dr. Ike, who is the therapist, and then Marty, who is a... Uh, He's he's the guy that's taken over the the fabrics company from from his dear old dad after after passing away. So uh, kind of not necessarily reluctant to take over the family business, but not doing a great job with it, uh, which nope. ends up getting him into therapy with with this uh, with this character. Uh, we also get a uh, little. It's not a flash forward because it's not 2010 it's 2021 as we're watching this but um it's the closest to the modern time that we get uh, right. which kind of opens up the show uh and it's of uh, paul rudd's character dr ike uh hosting a party at a pretty lavish house up in the hamptons which we'll get into in, in subsequent episodes so um as far as pilots go nick what would you think of this one did this uh this hook you in in its 35 minute runtime yeah it, it set the stage for some uh very interesting characters uh and a story that uh will seemingly have a lot of a lot of drama as it plays out yeah we got our, our first look at uh dr ike's unorthodox therapy <sighs> yeah and that was one thing that like <laughs> there's a couple of you know a couple of key, key phrases in there that that bugged me and, and speaks about his character and what his agenda may or may not be of course that you know it's unveiled after the three episodes as to where he's going with this because sure. yep. which we'll get to of course but yeah there yeah man some of it was just super super cringy i'm like oh boy yeah it's so funny uh, too because like paul rudd is an insanely likable human being right right that's all anybody ever talked about he just won sexiest man alive people magazine yeah he's in the marvel movies he's in all these comedies and like this is a very far cry from Ron Burgundy and Brian Fantana. Right? <laughs> Half of the uh, new uh, anchor team has been reunited. Yeah, I know. We just need like Champ Kind to show up with uh, and Steve Carell <laughs> to talk about loving. Land. Yeah, we'll be we'll be yeah, off Brick. to the races. But uh, yeah, Brick Tamlin. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. 
but like part of Paul Rudd's whole aura is that he seems like a genuinely nice guy and he's very likable. And yep. a lot of that translates to a lot of his characters in his movies, uh, or in this case, a TV show. But what's interesting about this one is that he's extremely likable, but as the audience, you know that he's like a total scumbag. Oh God. Yeah. And, and like just the, the manipulation, <laughs> it starts in the very first episode. There, there yep. is no like, lead time where it's like oh man this guy might be like a really nice dude who's looking out for marty's best interest it like it, he immediately goes into manipulation mode with him like even when they go to play basketball and, oh yeah. yeah and he yeah. tricks him into passing the ball to him when they're on separate teams like it's literally like he owns marty the minute that he first sees him and yep i i, I was hooked after the first 35 <laughs> minutes i thought it was it was great um obviously there's the the stuff in 2010 the guy that takes the photo obviously you can tell from the back of his head Ferrell, that that's like yeah. an old will ferrell um yeah. and then he's burying the the ceramic the cow, cows, cows yeah uh, in the in the backyard yeah. and it's one of those things where it just makes you wonder like man how did how get to are that we point? gonna get from from a to z on this one yeah. um so i i thought the the first episode did exactly what it needed to it, it got in it it hooked you onto the characters and and it got out but um we then got two longer episodes after that. I think the uh, the second episode was about 40 minutes and then the third episode was was close to 50 minutes. Um, yeah. Episode two was entitled The Ceremony. Uh, in this one, Dr. Ike convinces Marty to, to redo his bar mitzvah, uh, which for those who don't know, it's something you do when you're like 13 years old and it's like becoming an adult in in the jewish faith uh obviously phyllis who is his sister is not a fan of nope. him doing that um because they had a bar mitzvah for him already it was when their parents were both alive they got to do it as a family so it starts to create some of the tension between those two characters um but really the reason that it all happens is because dr ike didn't get a chance to have a bar mitzvah with a big party and a dj and the horror and all this other stuff um so he's basically booking this party and living it like it's his own bar mitzvah vicariously <laughs> right yeah. and he's he's just manipulating the ever-loving shit out of will ferrell's character uh and we also get to meet uh his his wife bonnie in this episode who i think bonnie um, in subsequent episodes will will become more important to the plot so um what, what yeah. were your thoughts on episode two i mean it was, I, I think obviously the, the trend of these episodes um the next one just continues to be better than the first one. Um, the previous one, I, I thought it was interesting in uh, in that one, uh, in the ceremony, the second episode, because we see that flashback to 1956. And, you know, even as a, as a child, Marty has always been anxious and nervous and mm -hmm. just had these these um, these confidence problems. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing, and we again, we see this in the first episode, too, where Phyllis is always been there for him right like mm -hmm. like that part where um oh it was a debbie deborah uh will ferrell's uh uh fling or is it is uh oh, the one that promised or got the trip to mexico promised to yeah and, they, and but yeah. then she she's trying to find him in that first episode and then uh catherine han phyllis is like oh are you pregnant pregnant again right and just calls her out like you know because yeah it's the same it's the same song and dance that she's heard before and there's a yep. lot of banter and and i just wrote down like phyllis is a boss like she just yeah, handles man. that whole situation like a boss and and you can see in at that time even like the the stage is set how she's really been running the company ever since their parents passed away mm. and and you know even in the uh the was it the second episode with the, the guy who comes in to buy the, the curtains and he's like well we we use we use the we use this because it's the it's the uh it's recommendation you know and he's like i didn't order yeah. that though and yep. he wouldn't stand up to it and she's like oh well we'd hate to lose your business but um right. have fun bye Meanwhile, marty's having a panic attack behind the curtain in, in the corner the behind the curtains. yeah <laughs> and <laughs> yep but like you know the one thing where this is again we we see the the, the manipulation again where uh dr ike says rounding up on the hour that was the first one i'm like mm -hmm. that's that, that's a little sus um yeah, little but then bit. he says oh well uh, it's time to go eat but if but you know if you if you want to come with me we can continue the session 
right. but I'm gonna have to charge you. It's Which is like, a huge boundary thing. Like oh, if yeah, anyone who's ever gone to therapy before, that's not how therapy works. No, you don't go to dinner with your therapist. Not. You don't play basketball with your therapist. You nope. don't cook up a bar mitzvah. Yeah, and, your, and it's not a thing. And like the, that whole um, that whole uh, trust spiel, like just hearing that, um, I, I immediately thought even more sus. And this this is where he really starts to lay lay on the the manipulation. Are you talking about uh, after he finds out that Phyllis called the the, the other rabbi? The other rabbi. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's, it's you, like he you starts see a to mean feel, streak come out of yeah, Paul Rudd. Yeah. yeah, you start to feel Oof. you start you start to see him possibly be threatened by Phyllis, and mm -hmm. which is very interesting. And again, you mentioned how likable Paul Rudd is, and and the way they made his character. Uh, and I don't know what this uh, Dr. Ike looks like in real life, um, like the actual person, but the way Paul Rudd looks, he's like, he's very clean cut with his beard. He's got this like, you know, like poofy, like, you know, well combed, you know, thick head of hair, mm -hmm. this smile with those large glasses, yep. you know, and it's like at the same time, he's got a very punchable face, like, because <laughs> all he's doing is just conning conning this poor helpless vulnerable person mm -hmm. uh, which happens all too often in in the real Very life often. and yeah. you know and of course people like that deserve to be punched because they're assholes um <laughs> so yeah the second episode just got even better and i'm like boy i i just I, the entire time i'm thinking how often is this going to escalate mm -hmm. uh because in the very beginning that clip from 2010 we don't know how we got to point A to point B, right? But right. it's it's kind of see we do we see the ceramic cow. He's like, I'm gonna own that one day. It's yep. like, will you now? Okay. And yep. it turns and out then, he he does. <laughs> we, yep, yep. Because <laughs> we see what happens with that ceramic cow in the third episode. So gets buried in the backyard of, of a large. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, what is he digging a hole of? Because it's dark out, you can't see how big it is for the most part, but right. We find out. Yeah. And I think the, the second episode is also where uh marty buys the ralph Lauren shirt yep. to try to make himself look more like dr ike and to have yep. more of an imposing presence in the office and yep. he, he kind of bullies phyllis a little bit when she shows up late and they're having like a staff meeting and, and all this other stuff yeah. um and, and you can see the the influence of dr ike's character on Starting marty down yeah it's already there man because it's like marty is so alone and he finally found someone to latch on to that like mm -hmm. he feels like understands him and he mm -hmm. just becomes obsessed with that person and not like yeah. in like a like a uh not like he's like attracted to him in any way but he's just like he wants to be in that it's like a cult almost but the yep. cult is only two people <laughs> it, it's like yeah. marty and it's just it's it's really really fascinating uh how they're kind of twisting this this thread and and taking us along for the ride for it but um you know what have been funny is yeah. if if marty's name wasn't marty and it was mike because then it would be mike and ike <laughs> <laughs> that would be good his uh, name is marty markowitz though which the poor yeah. guy he probably got bullied to blue hell when he was in grade school but yeah um and he was also like the rich kid which yeah. probably didn't go over well with with the other kids but uh we find out a little bit more about his finances and or do his we ever in his family in episode three which is entitled the treatment uh in episode three marty invites ike to his office uh to help solve a problem for a large opportunity for a broadway play where they're asked to provide uh curtains as a backdrop uh to mm -hmm. production of jesus christ superstar which is hilarious in its own right um and then uh phyllis who we find out is going through a divorce uh, is hard up on money. Uh, apparently, she's not very good at managing her money, so they have to crack into the the estate the trust, and the trust yeah. of of their parents. But she gets locked out of it because she goes to see Doctor Ike to kind of do some recon on him. Uh, they have a little bit of a blow up. Doctor Ike tattles on her to Marty. Marty cuts her off from the money, uh, and then that prompts her to break into Marty's place steal from his safe leave a note for him about boundaries uh which then prompts marty to call dr ike at two o'clock in the morning uh and then they take a drive up to the hamptons together to make sure that surprise 
the house in the Hamptons is okay in that Phyllis didn't go there to steal more stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then we get this really long, harrowing one take where Marty's like running through the house, making sure everything's okay. And Ike is just looking around, realizing the cash cow that he has stumbled into. Yep. And the gears just start turning in his head about how he's going to literally bleed that cash cow dry. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have a, a really intense conversation in the backyard around the pool that ends in a hug and you can just it, you can you feel, feel it yeah that this is a very very bad downward spiral that uh is is not going to go well for for will ferrell's character so no, um, well, i don't know about you i thought the third episode was easily the best one which, oh, yeah, which is for good sure. because that's the one where it kind of leaves you hanging uh before before next week with a with a new one but uh curious to hear your thoughts on on episode three yeah, definitely the the best out of out of the uh, three, and you know it was interesting because there's a there's a part in that episode where I feel like Ike was actually genuine and and human for a moment, and and again it, it was it could have been on purpose uh, to further the manipulation, but he says you know it, it's like there's truth in in just in saying fine. Mm -hmm. someone asks how things are and it's like no like don't say that you need to say what what the actual truth of the matter is and so he starts to open up more right but in doing that it also leads to ike finding more about the, the problems about yep. phyllis about you know, their history about the their you know their parents and the business and whatnot and you know, Ike puts the spin on 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 Marty about Phyllis, right? And I'm like, this mm -hmm. is not gonna go well. Something's gonna happen, and and again, it, it, it that first invitation to uh, be the uh, the industrial psychologist, and I'm like Isaac Stevens, and then I'm like, she's gonna figure it out as soon as she shows <laughs> up. And, yeah, and she calls him out for it. It's like, you know, what are you doing? Um, and and the and, and even when he has his he has a Ike has a conversation with his wife about mm -hmm. oh, it was a great day like i canceled all the appointments and and i'm um, getting paid for all the cancellations she, and she's like is that okay and he's like yep. of course it's okay and i'm like no not no, okay it is not <laughs> okay um and i think again you 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 see how well he's good at being a con man about being just mm -hmm. there's like using the therapist profession but just being you know extremely um manipulative because phyllis because phyllis goes in and she has a plan. It's it, it essentially starts to backfire mm -hmm. until he says something and she snaps out of it mm -hmm. and is like, I was, I'm going to make a, uh, a bad, um, analogy, uh, uh, of, <laughs> of, uh, WandaVision because, uh, a spells and Agatha Harkness uh, put a spell on Wanda, Wanda and then she broke out of it. Just like, you know, yeah, Phyllis being yeah. Agatha. And then she breaks out of this spell from, from Ike. Yeah. Um, one slip, man. He one breaks slip, that doctor it, patient it, confidentiality and yep. that's it. And, and it's funny cause she, you know, she, she's like, I don't have all the fancy certifications and the education, but I've got instincts mm -hmm. and I don't have a good instinct about you. Don't doctor. Trust you. Yeah. And, and I'm glad she said that because y you know, it, it, again, it, it furthers the threat, Yep. but it also makes it's like that was her play. Now Ike's gonna now it's, now I'm gonna make another you know analogy. Now he's got the ball in, in, in his side of the court, mm -hmm. and he's gonna rush over to make his shot. And of course, that's him visiting Marty uh, at at, the, at Broadway, and yep. it's like we're done. And it's like I, I I wouldn't I would never come between a brother and sister, mm -hmm. not even when I know that one of them is, is lost. And so that argument is kind of what starts to burn the uh I'm making that's nice, nice little transition as well it burns the candles between brother and sister <laughs> because yeah. she says fuck you and then oh, and then like man. ravages his entire apartment mm -hmm. or you know home and you know steals uh half a million dollars worth of of uh you know valuables right ridiculous amount of money and because uh, remember this is in 1982 yeah so half a million that, dollars is way more money back then than it is now yeah and of course that that scene when they were at broadway and though like i'm just expecting this you know somewhat of a comedic relief to happen and just because they're like oh my god there's one candle there are all those three. Oh my god there's bigger candles are, are those torches 
Dude. I'm expecting something to just light up in flames and just go totally bad. And then again, the, the bad experience makes him latch on to Dr. Ike even more, mm-hmm. yep. right? But it doesn't, and they they kind of dodge a bullet. Yet it's only opening night. Right. So I wonder... Plays, those plays happen every like, night of the week, twice yeah, on Saturdays. Like, right. So I wonder <laughs> at some point in time this season if there's going to be a tragedy at, yeah. at Broadway. And again, I don't I, I, I don't want to review or, or, or know any of the truth behind this. Oh, no, this. no, not at all. Like, I'm not I don't, don't want to do any anything. research. Cool. I, like, I'll like afterwards, after this is over, sure. Sure, yep. But it's, yeah, it's it's the, the 2 a.m. call that, yeah, he, he gets in his, like, he's like his nightgown or whatever. He puts on a leather, with a leather jacket. Leather jacket. He goes <laughs> to the Hamptons and, Ugh. you know, and I think even when he's talking to him on the phone, he starts telling him, about all the valuables and i'm like that's a huge mistake marty he's like and he's talking he's, he's like the grants the this the that. yeah the bonds I'm like, like oh the, the hand shut the, up the the, <laughs> the, the the uh what was it the the, the accounts and you know uh the offshore accounts or whatever it was i'm uh-huh. like dude you are literally handing him the biggest gold mine of his yep. life and then you know he also made this like egregious offer to come work at afc and i'm like dude you're literally mm-hmm. it's like it's like a virus he's 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 his virus is spreading to every or like yeah. a cancer even like it's like the, he's well, spreading to every part of his body it's that's funny you say that ruining though. him because the title card for the show is different every time but mm-hmm. it's always vines spreading over yep. and every different title card has been a different facet of marty's life it's and like uh the vines are, are dr ike and he's just taking over it's like a an um, invincible. There's like blood that kind of splatters <laughs> a little bit, but it's like more and more and more and more, right? So except this time, it's just Paul Rudd. <laughs> it, it's just one guy, right? Like, yeah, like I and, and he, it's he, dude. He even spells it out for us. He says, "People take advantage of of you, and you let them. You let them." He literally just handed him, and and, and again, he probably knew. He's not too, he's not that smart to realize what I'm saying. I'm gonna say right. it anyway, yeah. right? Right to his face. And then, which I think that might come back at some point too. Uh, it could, yeah. But he's that 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 weird, creepy walk around the pool. Like, if I'd be like, dude, why are you why are you walking around the pool, like talking mm-hmm. to me? Like, you can just stand here and face to face and talk. <laughs> you don't need this. Yeah, we don't make this like weird gesture about about stuff. I'm like, oh, I see your problem. You had it all as a kid. You're rich. It's like yep. you don't know what it's like to have nothing. And I'm like, well, you probably didn't so you're extremely envious and and jealous and again you want to take it all from him and it's like you're preying on a weak a weak person uh even Mm -hmm. though he had all that it it didn't seem to face him uh and again it's that we see that hampton's house and which we see in the very very beginning in 2010 man it's and i don't know if it's something where uh dr ike ends up owning the house or... right i'm like how does he come in possession of it like this because because yeah marty says that he bought the, his shares from 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 phyllis so phyllis yeah, doesn't own the house and then he he bought he, hers, she just has a key so, yeah so <laughs> it's gonna be I, interesting man i think he's obviously he's gonna just you know swindle it from him you know well i think if you read the uh the the tease for episode four to us yes uh, that'll that'll give us a little light as to the first way that he's going to start siphoning some of that money away so why don't yes. you let us let us have the uh the tease for the foundation which is episode four dr ike persuades marty to start a charity with him hmm. marty sparks with a female employee at the frame store though interesting so it sounds like the manipulation is going to be Ike convincing Marty like how to talk to women and how to talk himself up and be like a, yep. a big tough man or whatever. But yep. at the same time, he's like, Hey, we need to start a charity. I need $50,000 or something like that to start it. But he starts probably like cutting some of that over to the side and then he becomes rich off of it or something like that. It's yeah. Uh, like, I wonder, I wonder if at some point the charity, you know, is tied to the the Hampton house. Right. But it could be, yeah. it's like an anonymous winner. I don't know. I don't know. Like a, I can't say a raffle, but just in some way, again, it's, it's, it's Dr. Ike taking it from him. Right. Right. Right in front of his face. Mm-hmm. 
po- yep. my, right in right in front of a uh, poor Bob Ross's face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what he looked like to me. I'm like, why did they make him look like a, like a like Bob Ross's actual brother or yeah. like you he, know, he's just... a cross between uh, Bob Ross and Will Ferrell's character from SNL with the cowbell skin yeah. for Blue Oyster Cult, uh, <sighs> the the big uh, puffy hair and everything. But uh, I mean, the Reaper. Overall, man, I mean, I, I love the fact that it's it's three really good actors yeah that are that are kind of at the the core of this um they're all performing at a very high level very, uh, yeah. they're all comedic actors by trade you know like that's where they all got their start but i'm a huge this fan serious of anytime a comedic actor transitions into something more dramatic so whether it's like robin williams doing one hour photo or Brian Cranston going from Malcolm in the middle to breaking bad, you know, right. like it, it, you, you learn that there's a lot of depth and a lot of sadness in comedians. Uh, <laughs> and to see Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell and Catherine Hahn come in and do something that it has its funny moments. Don't get me wrong. Sure, like I, sure. the cringe was so bad during the Jesus Christ superstar thing that I had to put like a blanket over my head. Cause I was like, the fucking stage is going to catch on fire. I know it's it going to catch on fire. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it is a very dark, dark show with a lot of very serious, heavy, not legal stuff that's going on. Um, yeah, that yeah, that whole like, have you ever heard of uh, something, something homicide? And I'm like, I'm like, that is so illegal. Like Something bad's going to happen. And yeah, you know, and I, I, I feel I feel terrible for for Marty. And yep. uh, and again, even even for Phyllis, because she's trying to break through to him and he doesn't he can't. He can't listen to his the, he, literally the only family he's got left. Only family which, he's got left. Yeah. Which at that point, it's you know at some point, and again, I I I'll hate to see of how he snaps out of it. Um, and hopefully it's not too late for him. Uh, but oh, it'll be too late. I but think. yeah, it, I have to guess. Sadly, yeah. But yeah, no, like the, the, the acting for all three, and again, it's great. Th- these are just different roles for them, but they're so good. They're yeah. so good in this, and it's it's strange because I know Paul Rudd. Uh, such a likable person and i kind of low-key hate his guts and it's not it's not it's not him but it's it's like whoever this guy is in real life is a total sleazeball (laughs) pos yeah but it's it's funny though because like a lot of the shows that that we usually talk about on on this youtube channel or comic book or star wars or sci-fi or you know there's a lot of like action heavy stuff stuff, and like cgi and super wide angle shots whatever and like this show is just a lot of like it's a lot of 50 50 which is yep. the camera hangs over one character's shoulder and is having a conversation with the other character and it's just good actors in a room with good dialogue and good performances and sometimes that's all you need folks like that's that creates yep. really compelling dynamic stuff and and if the actors are good enough um you don't have to rely on action sequences or cgi or a rousing musical score like yeah this this is just really good stuff i i'm hooked on it i think apple yes, is genius by doing the whole drop three episodes at, at first and then make you wait a week in between all the others <laughs> because they give you just enough right because like i think we've i'm okay with before. that weapon or uh, weapon wow um... it, it is a weapon <laughs> no you're absolutely yeah. right because the <laughs> average statistic is like three episodes or so is uh... what it takes for someone to decide if they're going to stick with something so they give you the first three and by the end of that third episode you're like oh god this is like watching a fucking car crash happen in slow motion I can't wait for Friday now. I want to yeah. watch the the fourth episode. And there's a ton of shit that's coming out on Friday, but I'm probably more excited for this than any of like I'm more excited for episode four of this than I am for the finale of Foundation. Yeah, it's it's a it's a I like this this method better than the typical here's the entire show at once. Yeah, go binge the whole thing. Right. Like I, f- I feel like if they were to do it's like even half the show, you know, uh, like for for The Witcher when that comes out release like the first four episodes and then do and the then, weekly. or yeah like or just we're gonna release the first half this week and then the second half next week just something different that split that splits it up a bit more because yeah. i think also when you have a great show it can and then it proves itself by being able to stand on a weekly release basis right uh like i'm sure this one will so yeah absolutely and you know for like the stuff we do we just spent 30 minutes and we burned through three episodes 
yeah. next week, we can do a 20 minute episode just on episode four and actually like dive into the character performances and the nuances and the writing and cinematography, um, which is stuff where if you have to do the binge model, you just usually don't get the, the case that on that because the new cycle yep. is over and then it's just it's silly. So uh, yep. Apple, I applaud you for doing things the way that you do it. Uh, yep. I think it's it's very smart. Um, and I hope that other streamers start adopting this model soon. Yes. Um, what would you give these first three episodes out of 10? Um, like individually or just all yeah, like as a whole? Just as a whole. Uh, yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd say a, at least an eight. Okay. I'd probably maybe go like 8.5, to be honest. Yeah. Like, it's just it, it. they they did a great job with this. Yeah, I, I was going 8.5 for, yeah. for it. I, I thought that. As far as TV shows go, uh, this one hooked me pretty much immediately. Uh, and yep. I, I absolutely can't wait to see how far down the rabbit hole of despair <laughs> we go. Um, so buckle up. It's it's, it's definitely going to be a fun, gonna ride. Be a fun ride. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to cover it every week uh, with the yep. with the new episodes. This this one's going to be a good one, I think. So yep. uh, so that's going to do it for this video, folks. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, drop us a comment below and let us know uh, what you thought of these three episodes. If it was enough to hook you in and and get you to devote your time for another five episodes over the next five weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already to help us get to our goal of a thousand subscribers. Uh, hit us up on social media. We are on Twitter and Instagram at Real Heroes Show. Um, we had a foundation video drop this week. Uh, Nick is talking about Dexter. Uh, there's other movies. stuff, yeah. movies we're going to talk about. I think Finch, <laughs> The Harder They Fall, um, Red Notice came out. We might get to yep. that um, small independent film with three actors <laughs> some, that you've never act. heard of. Up and but, coming. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that that Johnson fella. <laughs> I don't know about him. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe he should try a sport like pro wrestling uh, or football maybe, might be beneficial for him. But, uh, but yeah, so we got, we got a lot of stuff coming in the pipeline. And then, you know, after that uh, next week, Hawkeye comes out right before Thanksgiving. Yeah. There's, there's some movies coming out. We want to review. So a ton of stuff on the, uh, on the docket for us moving forward. So make sure to be on the lookout for all of that. And so, so much more until next time. We'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.